Hey there everyone, welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be going through my top 5 favourite Third Doctor stories. And honestly the Pertwee era is such a hard one to rank, it was nearly as hard as the Fourth Doctor. And it's just because he has so many stories on very similar great levels that singling them out was actually really tricky and actually ordering them was so tough. Uh, and so because of that, I'm going to go through a few honourable mentions. We have Terror of the Autons, Curse of Peladon, and the Carnival of Monsters. All great stories, but ultimately, they just missed out of the top five. And of course, this video is my own opinion. Agree with it, don't agree with it, do what you like. But as always, let me know your favourite Third Doctor stories down below in the comments, and while you're down there, consider subscribing. Spoiler warning, reverse, reverse the polarity, plan. and let's get into this video. And first up on this list, I have to go for the first Third Doctor story out there, which is Spearhead from Space. And this is the gold standard for what to do with your post-regeneration stories, because this episode comes out like a ball of fire, introducing us to the Third Doctor in such a compelling way. It's able to introduce us to the format, to the style that the show is sort of changing direction into, and all of this reinvention works really well with this kind of story. And at the centre of that we have the Doctor, who in reality doesn't actually do much for the first one, two episodes. But as soon as he's in it, they're immediately giving us bits and pieces from this character and it just works really well. The pace of this story is absolutely brilliant. In addition to that, characters like the Brigadier and Liz Shaw are major characters in this story. Uh, and they're also really well developed as well. Um, other side characters, they're pretty good as well, and I love all of the themes of corruption and monopolizing and business out there. Then of course we have the Autons, who are a really, really, really creepy villain. Even watching it 50 years later, I have no idea how scary this must have been uh, back in the 1970s, but yeah, my god, this is a really creepy story. The Yortons were a very consistent and real threat, uh, I feel. And I feel like making this story Dr. Lights during the first half worked really well. Ultimately, this episode had a great pace, a great direction, and just some brilliant world building and character work. It, of course, introduced us to the third Doctor, who's fantastic. It had some great villains, some good themes in there. Yeah, all around top-notch stuff, and it really made me look forward to what the rest of the Third Doctor's era was going to contain. It was a really exciting one. At number four, we have Planet of the Daleks, and this is sort of my dark horse pick, uh, because I think this story is really underrated. I really appreciate this one. The Daleks are a really good presence in this story, and they're used quite well. They're not in it hugely, but I also kind of appreciate that. They're not milked. You know, they're used quite well. They're doing what Daleks do, nothing out of character or anything like that. And I actually quite like some of the new designs. Um, but to be honest, this story isn't really about the Daleks. This story is really more about the Doctor, Joe, and I guess some of these side characters. I think all these characters interact really well, but the strength of it really is between Joe and the Third Doctor, because honestly, this story starts to sort of seep in this darker, more brash side of the Third Doctor, one that later we sort of see through stories like Time Lord Victorious and so on. Um, and because of this, we've got some really good dialogue, some really good pacing, and as well as that, this is really an important one for Joe's character development. Uh, it also has a very good premise, I feel. Um, it's got some good character moments, and it's got a really good aesthetic. Ultimately, this story is never boring. It really is much more of a character drama than you would come to expect from Doctor Who. Its importance really is with its character work and with their arcs, and in terms of executing that, it does it really well. And in terms of giving us a pretty compelling Dalek story, it does well, but it understands all the legwork we need to get there. I also think the story is very well directed, and goddamn, some of the effects are still really good here. But yeah, overall, it's good looking, it's good paced, and in terms of the story it tells, it's just very satisfying. 
would highly recommend this one, I think it's underrated. And third place, we have the Time Warrior. God, even its name is cool. And for starters, I really like the medieval setting here. I think it works really nicely. And because of that, this story has some great production design going on in it. As well as that, we have the use of the Sontarans here. This is the first introduction. And okay, when I say Sontarans, it's one in links, but for starters, his makeup is still amazing. And he provides a genuinely good threat to all these characters. Um, have some of the effects aged? Yes, however, since then they've obviously added some better effects to it. And in terms of the story itself, I really like that they do with a lot of the characters. I really like the third Doctor's implementation here. And what they do with time travel in this story is pretty cool as well. Uh, Sarah Jane obviously is introduced in this story and she's used surprisingly well. Uh, as well. I actually really liked her dynamic with the third Doctor in this story. And I liked her fish out of water elements which really eventually showed her worth in the story as well. It's brilliantly directed, the effects are incredible. I think this story is very well paced as well. I really like all the cliffhangers here. Um, I like the medieval setting, I like Lynx as a villain, I like the plot. Ultimately, this is just a really fun story with a lot going on in it and a lot that it does well. For an era that, for the most part, was lacking in pseudo-historical stories, this one more than makes up for it. Next up we have the Sea Devils, and the Sea Devils is very quintessential John Pertwee Doctor Who. And it's great, that's the simple thing I can say about this. Um, this is all the things that you would come to expect from a third Doctor story done right. Um, Obviously it has quite a routine plot out there, but to be honest, that's okay. As with traditional things, the Doctor, his companion, unit, some of these big action sequences, a villain that's been hiding underground for some time, and the government trying to cover it up. You know, this is all conventional stuff, but it's in execution that this story really finds its stride. Uh, for starters, the pacing is so good in this episode. Um, I really like a lot of the dialogue here, I really like the cliffhangers. Um, and its direction is also really good, a lot of the effects are really well done, a lot of the sequences are well handled. This always has a way of being able to keep my attention on the story and on the plot. The story sees the return of the Master and this arguably has his best moments out of all of the Third Doctor era. Uh, the Sea Devils themselves, they look great, their makeup and effects are really solid. And overall, the kind of style that this episode has is just done really well. Like I said, the dialogue's fantastic, and the way all of the characters bounce off against each other is very interesting. Uh, this story is very focused on the third Doctor himself, and he really does steal the show. He's really good in this episode. Um, Katie Manning and Roger Delgado are also very good here, but John Pertwee is definitely the driving force behind this episode. There are some amazing character moments, a unique enough plot uh, for us to go through, and yeah, ultimately this is just another action-packed Third Doctor story that takes us through all the necessary routes that we expect, but it's able to get there so excitingly with such great showmanship and energy. Uh, this really is a special story, and in terms of stories that encapsulate the Third Doctor era well, this is the one. If you are going to watch one Third Doctor story, let it be this one, because I feel like this one gives you the best representation of everything that happens in his era. It really is just golden. But taking gold itself, we have Inferno. And Inferno is not only one of the best Third Doctor stories, but one of the best Doctor Who stories out there. And like I said, it was really hard separating which of these stories was genuinely the best. And in the end, I went for the one that felt like it was breaking the mold the most, which is Inferno. Because really, we don't often see this alternate reality and this impending doom part of the story come in there. Um, but it's all really well handled. It's seven parts, but honestly, it feels like it's about three. This story really flies by with some great pacing uh, and some also phenomenal direction out there. 
Uh, we of course have this alternate universe that's introduced to us here and throughout the whole of that the effects are really good. A lot of the messages and themes they have of corporations and very worrying ethics are really well done here and subsequently the actors do fantastic jobs, in particular Caroline John and Nicholas Courtney. John Pertwee is also really good in this story, I just really like the role that the Doctor plays in this, very much, this is very fast paced, very exciting, uh, and also just very interesting. We also have the introduction of the Prime Wards in this story, they're a really cool presence as well. Um, a lot of people have argued, are they really necessary in it, to which I say yes. A, because it pads the story out to seven episodes, but also I feel like it really enriches the themes quite well here. Um, a lot of the stuff it does in terms of these really dark and twisted ideas it has going on here, they just handled really well, and I really liked seeing this what if of Doctor Who, where the Doctor wasn't there and Unit turned evil. Um, but yeah, overall, really stunning pace, really great direction, some fantastic production design. All the themes and character work just works really well, and it's a unique story idea that just doesn't happen very often. Uh, and because of all this creativity and great execution, I have to give Inferno the nod for the best Third Doctor story out there. And with that said, thank you for watching the video, I hope you guys enjoyed it. There of course is going to be a second part on the top 5 worst Third Doctor stories, so be sure to watch out for that one. Uh, as well as that, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts on the Third Doctor era as a whole are, as well as the stories I've talked about, and what your favourites are. Uh, be sure to check out my Twitter, at Movies for some other smaller Doctor Who things that I don't really have time to make full videos on. But like I said, thank you very much for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment, and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye!